Good afternoon. Uh, in the last video, we decided to use an NE555 timer chip to drive our uh, stepper motor. And there's tons of uh, videos and websites that explain how to use the NE555. But I thought I'd just make this short video because we only want to use that chip in a certain way. Uh, and there are three different ways that they can be used, but uh, we're only interested in one of them. Here's our chip. It's only one centimetre long, it's got eight pins, and you can always tell which is the top because there's a, a cutout and a little disc there. Um, and what we do is we put it on a prototyping board like this. We use a prototyping board which got lots of holes in it connected together, and don't worry about all this, our chip will plug in on the, over the channel in the middle and we can then make all the connections to it, and they're not very complicated. Here's the circuit that we're going to assemble on our prototyping board. And this is the A stable mode and in this mode the supply voltage charges up the capacitor, the 100 microfarad capacitor at the bottom left and when it's two thirds charged the supply voltage will appear at pin 3 which is the output pin and it will go via a suitable resistor uh, to a light emitting diode, that's the bit in red you see and the diode will light up. At that point the capacitor will begin to discharge and when it's got down to a third charge it will switch off and the power will be removed from pin 3 and the diode will go out. However, then it will repeat. The capacitor will charge up again and the diode will come on. And it does that over and over again. And here we are. The light emitting diode is indeed coming on and going off and coming on and it's been doing that actually for about three quarters of an hour uh, and it will continue to do so uh, indefinitely uh, and so uh, don't worry about all these wires I mean it's ever so easy to put something like that together um, and um, so it proves that the chip is working and uh, we can have an on off sequence uh, at whatever frequency we like. So our board is up and running uh, there's only one insty weasty drawback uh, at the moment the frequency with which it is switching on and switching off is extremely low and to drive our stepper motor we must have uh, a much higher frequency like thousands of uh, times per second so how are we going to get that? In order to make our LED flash quicker uh, the one obvious thing to do is to change this capacitor which is 100 microfarads for a smaller one and we've got a whole row of them here gradually getting smaller which we can try and see what happens Well, we've put a 10 microfarad capacitor in place of the 100 microfarad and the light is flashing quicker, uh, but it's still not quick enough. So, we will take that out and put in a 1 microfarad capacitor and see if we can stick it into pin 2. And We've now put in a 1 microfarad capacitor uh, and the light is now flashing really quite quickly. Uh, I hope you can see it. it. It must be flashing probably 8 or 10 times a second, though that's still not enough. Uh, we'll put an even smaller capacitor in. Ooh, sorry about the dead cut, but we've now put in a one-tenth of a microfarad capacitor and it looks as though the LED is on all the time. The problem is, it's the persistence of vision of the human eye. It looks as though it's on all the time, but it's not. It's actually flashing, uh, the, the chip is going on and off at, I don't know, uh, probably 100 or 200 times a second. And we, we think it's on all the time, so we've got to figure out a way of how can we find out what frequency it's flashing at. Well, if the diode is going on and off uh, at, say, 100 or 200 times a second, um, and bearing in mind it's a square wave, uh, you know, off, on, off, on, um, uh, it ought to be audible. And so if we connected it up to a nearby amplifier, would we be able to actually hear it going on and off? This lead here uh, goes away to the traditional nearby audio amplifier, and I've put in a capacitor there, uh, and that is nothing to do with the timing capacitor. This is the timing capacitor. Uh, this capacitor is simply to isolate our amplifier from the 12 volt supply. And so I'm going to plug it into the output of the capacitor and will we be able to hear anything? Whoa. 
could be it's working we can actually hear the oscillations coming from the chip and uh, all we need now is to find out what frequency they are well we not only have a friendly neighborhood audio amplifier we also have a friendly neighborhood virtual oscilloscope on our pc and there we have the nice square wave uh, that is being generated and up here it tells us that the frequency is 272.89 hertz now we're feeding the 272 hertz um, from our chip into the stepper motor and as you can see it is going round uh, but it's only going round very slowly but this is perfectly normal because our motor requires 3200 pulses for one revolution and we're only feeding in 272 so it isn't going very fast so we need to speed it up one obvious way of speeding it up is to take out this capacitor and put in an even smaller one this is a one hundredth of a microfarad ah well the frequency has increased greatly with the result that the stepper motor is now going around quite fast um, and uh, I wonder what the frequency is okay um, here's our square wave and uh, I've spread it out a bit but now the frequency is 2600 and 29 Hertz bearing in mind that we've set the stepper motor to require 3200 pulses for one revolution and we have 2630 at the moment um, that's not quite 3200 so we'd expect the stepper motor to be doing just under one revolution per second and it's always nice to check these things out I think Okay, so uh, let's check it. Um, 2,631 divided by 3,200 is 0.82. So the thing should be doing 0.82 of a revolution per second times 60 would be 49, just over 49 RPM. The stepper motor has a bit of reflective tape on it and I'm going to measure it now with a uh, revolution counter and there we have it it's reading 49.3 rpm that's great it's always nice when uh, observations actually hang together and it means we're going in the right direction so I mean it's now all over by the shouting all we need to do now is to increase the speed considerably further and we'll be able to get a range of speed on our motor from shall we say around one revolution per second um, or that is you know 60 revolutions per minute up to shall we say 400 revolutions per minute uh, and if it's variable uh, we're home and dry here's the working circuit and you'll see it's only slightly changed from what we had before we've put in a one mega ohm variable resistor marked frequency adjust there and that will give us our range of frequencies the timing capacitor is now a one nanofarad that's a thousand picofarads or 0 0.001 of a microfarad and that's a lot smaller than we started with um, but everything else is pretty well the same on pin 3 we've left the 1k resistor in place that we use for the LED and that's because we don't want the whole supply voltage of 12 coming out through pin 3 and going to our drive unit because that's only supposed to have pulses up to 5 volts uh, this circuit is giving us about 2 volts which is fine and the frequency range of its output is about 740 to about 25 kilohertz so um, how does it, you know, is it working? what's it like? here's the setup all components are on the board and we've also got a variable resistor to uh, increase the frequency at the moment the motor is going quite slowly at 13 rpm but that's fine it'll go a lot faster than that if we make the adjustment you'll see it will speed up and gradually go faster and faster and there we are and now that's top speed so we'd better measure it and here we have uh, 459 rpm uh, that'll do fine so there we are. Um, now there's two or three more little points. One of them is um, it would be rather nice to have some sort of indication of how fast 
we're going on our speed control uh, and that, that's possible uh, in a very simple way. We've added four more components on the right hand side of the circuit. Um, a germanium diode comes off from our output, borrowing a little bit of it. Uh, germanium works better than silicon because of the lower voltage drop and the result uh, charges up this 10 nanofarad capacitor. And now across that is a variable resistor and a meter, I mean a fairly sensitive one, and by adjusting the 100k pot uh, we can get a full scale deflection and uh, the voltage will vary according to the frequency. Let's have a look. Yes, uh, we've got this rather nice old fashioned meter here and uh, the motor is going full speed and I'm going to adjust this preset now to give a full scale reading on that meter. Uh, bear with me to get the screwdriver into the slot and there we go and I've now set that meter to full scale. Now when we slow the motor down you'll see that the meter reading falls it doesn't do the whole scale but it does quite a bit of it and uh, back up to full speed it's full scale deflection. You could make a little calibration chart for the meter uh, but at least it enables you to go back to where you were before um, so it's all a bit of fun as well. Um, and that brings me to the, the, the very last thing which is stepper motors as I discovered uh, won't start at a high speed not using the simple control system like this. Um, when I first worked this out some time ago I was puzzled, I thought I'd done something wrong because if you switch the motor off when it was set to say 400 RPM it doesn't start when you switch it back on and the reason for that, that's perfectly normal for a stepper motor the reason is you've got such a high frequency going round the stator that the, the inertia of the rotor in the middle of the motor um, stops it from starting uh, so that the, the, uh, the, the signal um, is too fast to kick the rotor into motion uh, and therefore in practical applications whereby stepper motors are normally controlled by you know Arduino or you know computer software um, the speed is actually increased very quickly uh, once it's going it, it can go up to speed I think almost instantaneously so uh, that's a feature of this simple design which may be a drawback to you but uh, anyway I hope it's been of some help uh, and a little bit of fun as well. Bye!